Yo, what's good, E? How you been, bro? Bro, it's been a, a very, very good weekend, as you know. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta hear about it, bro. It's Friday, January 28th. We packed. Uh, missed a few days in the early week. Had a few things we wanted to handle. But we're back now. Radical Souls Podcast, episode, what are we up to now, four? Yep, season two. Word. Ethan, for the people that don't know, I'm Daniel, you're Ethan. Give them the, the scoop on the other channel. We got the sneakers coming up. We're going to do some reviews, me and Dan. So we're going to say how horrible these Red Thunder 4s are, but that's just a sneak peek. And we got a sneaker con. I'm just waiting for the video to upload soon. And we got a lot more to come. Yeah, so uh, that link will be in the description if you want to take a look at the sneaker stuff. Again, that's going to be mainly like sneakers. This channel will be sports. And whenever we get one of those like opening topic discussions, we'll have our own episode on that. We just haven't been too much on that because sports have been absolutely nuts. So, that's more ample, Exactly. That's exactly where I was about to go to. We got to talk this upcoming week of football. We got the NFC Championship, the AFC Championship. We got to talk a little bit what happened last weekend and the NBA. I mean, I'm wearing my, my RJ Barrett jersey. Shout out to uh, shout out to D on this one. Um, gonna have to gonna have to dive into that. There's so many rumors. So with that being said, E, let's get it. Let's get it. I'm gonna I'm sit back and relax. I'm gonna let you talk about uh, your bagels real quick. Joe Schleisty, Joe Burr. Uh, where do I even start? Because we were getting destroyed by the Titans defense. Yet, Joe Burrow still managed to pull away a W. I'm going to give Joe Burrow his credit, but I will also say that Ryan Tannehill threw that game away. Literally threw the game away. I think three interceptions that game. <laughs> and that very pivotal one to go into field goal. I'm... Yo, I'm watching, and I'm like, oh, okay, we're going to go into overtime. We might get this Jamar Chase anytime touchdown. But, I mean, our, our picks last week were so bad. That touchdown wouldn't even have mattered. But, um, I mean, uh, it was a crazy weekend. I mean, if I was the Titans, I was just running with the best running back in the league. But that's just me. You know, I'm just a Bengals fan. What, what, what can I think? Yo, Derrick Henry's all – I mean, granted, we don't know if there was a snap count thing where they're looking long-term. We don't know if – all I know is I'm going to put in the ball around Tannehill's head like you just said. Like, I'm, I'm good on that that front. I think I'll pass on there. But Joe Burrow, he took a beating. The most sacks in the playoffs, nine sacks, and we still managed to win. Shout out Jamar Chase because one-on-one, no one was stopping him. No one was stopping him. It's, it's going to be an interesting matchup against the Chiefs, who um, played in probably the most historic f- playoff game that I can remember to date against the Bulls. <sighs> that might have been a game of the century. I don't think I've ever seen a, a more exciting playoff game than that. The Rams and Chiefs going to be probably my kind of Super Bowl. I know I'm a Bengals fan. That might be the Super Bowl. You're my witness. We had the fantasy draft, and Kenny asked, who do you guys have as the Super Bowl picks? And who did I say? Rams, Chiefs, and that was before the Odell trade. That was yo. This was literally before the season started, like a week before the season started. I said this. Yep, way before. That game was wild, bro. Like it, it was. You don't leave time for Mahomes. You don't, and that right there shows it all. Thirteen seconds left, and they still managed to tie it. Bro, thirteen seconds. And what's crazy is I saw the like Bills players celebrating the fans. I'm like, yo, do they not realize there's 13 seconds left and they got three timeouts still? What's going on here? And they didn't. They they clearly forgot he's a five hundred million dollar ten year man. I mean, one of the best QBs in the game, and they showed it. That had to be the worst offensive sequence I've ever seen in my life, though. I mean, granted, we're only 23 years old, so how much lifetime have we had? But. <laughs> That was crazy. Uh, like you said, one of the most exciting games we ever watched. Granted, I mean, the Bills, I, personally, I was just watching that like, yo, you, you're telling me you're going to give Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey all the space in the world to do whatever you want. But, hey, I'm a Jets fan. I don't really care. Thank God the Bills aren't in the championship game. It's still F Buffalo. Um, Yeah. 
So Chiefs Bengals, like you said, you do not have the confidence in the Bengals of winning. Um, I mean, obviously the fan in you is like, let's go Bengals, but yeah, the logical side of you is kind of like, I, I, I know we maybe should even be here because Ryan Tannehill threw the game away. So uh, the Chiefs are the Chiefs. I have to respect who they are, and they're just overall team of the offense perfect. The defense is a little shaky, but. That offense, no matter what happens, Patrick Mahomes will make it work. Also, so he's playoff ready now, Ethan? <laughs> <laughs> he took five tugs his first week, so I think he, uh, he had a warm-up, but then he threw a 13-game tire and then threw a, a tug to Kelsey. So, yeah, he's, he's playoff ready, I hope. <laughs> then we had the Packers and 49ers. Oh, my God. A blocked field goal, a blocked punt, game winner on a field goal. The last dance did not work out for Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. Bigger news, I think, of the week was the Broncos signed the offensive coordinator. I forgot his exact name. I forgot to pronounce it, but they signed the offensive coordinator to the Broncos. Do you think Aaron Rodgers is going to lead the Packers? Yes, 100%. Uh, He didn't want to begin the season with them. And now that they didn't win the chip, he's out of there. What do you do with Devontae Adams? Do you trade him? Do you try to sign him and then trade him? Do you, like, what, what do we do here? I mean, the one week where Rodgers is out and Jordan Love was in, they looked horrible together. Like, they felt like they were not in sync at all. Um, I would trade him. I mean, you still have Aaron Jones, but – that's the only two players. So, there. so do you franchise tag him and then try to trade him this year? Yeah. Because he's going to be a free agent. So, hundred percent, definitely do that. Word. Um. Yeah, forty nine is going to be playing the Rams, who um took down the Patriots, and that game was not Patriots. Whoa, wow, Tom Brady. You know, every time I think of Tom Brady, I don't think of Patriots automatically. The Buccaneers. And that game was insane too. They leave Cooper Cup wide the hell open and say here. Take the game, please. Just let him throw it. Matthew Stafford shows off his cannon of an arm, and Cooper Cup is wide the hell open downfield. Out of all players, Cooper Cup, the guy with the most receiving yards this year, you want to leave open. I, I don't see how the 49ers stop the Rams, honestly. Like, you could try to stop Cooper Cup, but then you're going to give Odell a chance to be one-on-one, something he hasn't seen since his rookie year before he makes the one-handed grab. Like, there was one thing about the Packers, like the offensive line was so bad that it was easy for the 49ers to get sacks, but the Rams' offensive line? Yeah, their tackles are very good. The guards are a little questionable, but if Matthew Stafford sees pressure coming up front, I'm assuming he's going to be able to get out the pocket a lot better. So, exactly. so is it safe to say Chiefs Rams Super Bowl, right? It's safe to say. I hate to say. Safe to say. I don't know. I'm not – I'm sold on the Chiefs. Sorry, Ethan. I'm not sold on the Rams. You know I love the Rams. You know I love the players on the Rams. Um, I don't know. There's something that kind of scares me about the Rams, though. I can, it might be that McVay owns six against the 49ers, but at some point you got to exercise your demon. I mean, does it happen? I agree with you, but the opposite. There's something about the 49ers that they always manage to win. I don't know how. Oh, no, let's just keep the ball out of Jimmy G's hands. I mean, I, anybody going to tell you that one. You're the yeah. one that says it every week. <laughs> you give the ball to Mitchell, and you give it to Debo to run it, and you're good. That, that's the game plan at this point. But are the Because the Rams, I feel like, are a team that could combat that a lot better, where it's like, yo, we're going to make Jimmy G throw. We know you can run. We're going to stop the run. Go ahead and throw all you want. I mean, you stopped Rodgers. Like – what more of a better QB to stop than Rodgers right before playing the Rams? So it's like, I don't know. It's hard. Because you're right. Vaughn Miller, Aaron Donald coming at you. Where where do you go after that? I don't know. I, don't, I honestly, I like we already said the Rams, but the 49ers always make something happen. They always keep the close game. I think this might be the – the low scoring game of the weekend. I think the Chiefs and Pat- Bengals have a better chance of being a higher scoring game, in my opinion. I, I don't know. I hope it's a forty point game each. Like, I, I hope to see just straight 
Tigers have to tell you. Have to tell you. I, I do too, but then I look at the 49ers and Rams, and they're kind of built more defensively than offensively, oh. if you want to, even though the Rams offense is crazy still, but you get what I'm saying. Like, those names on the defense are the, the real impact players of, okay, this isn't going to be a 40-point shootout. Yep, Nick Bosa and Bob Miller, and then you got Aaron Donald coming at you. It's a lot of defensive stars on both teams. And we're hoping, I mean, we love seeing offensive games. When it comes down to defense, that wins champions. And that's been my thing with the Rams. They'll get a stop when it matters most. And so far, they've done it every week. So We have against every – team in the playoffs, regular season, they have done it. It's going to be interesting to see, to see the least. That's going to be Sunday. We'll try to be back Monday, Tuesday, talk about that. And then we're going to take a little bit of a break because, you know, the Pro Bowl happens. Don't care about Pro Bowl anyways. And then we'll be here to break everything down the Friday before the Super Bowl. Yeah. And I'm excited, kind of, because I want to see who makes the Super Bowl. But if we don't win, then I can't be as excited. I mean, at least you're coming to gripes with what might happen. You feel me? Like, you already know. You're not delusional like me when it comes to the Knicks. <laughs> oh, yeah, because uh, the Knicks won LeBron James, um, who else? Carl Anthony Towns, Steph Curry. <laughs> Yo, chill with that, bro. We had a chance at all those players, at least. We actually had a realistic chance. At least give us that. Especially Curry. <laughs> bro, don't, don't break my heart like that. But, yo. Maybe maybe now we get a chance of getting our next uh not Curry because no one's gonna be Curry ever again but next big star. You want to yeah. talk about these trade rumors? Where you want to start? You want to start with the overall NBA and then link it to the Knicks or go Knicks and then link it to the NBA? Let's go to the Knicks first because we want to see how your team how you feel about your team right now. I actually want you to talk because you're the one that brought it up today about the trade that I saw yesterday. But you can bring it up and then I'll ask you what you think and then I'll give you my opinion on it. How's how's that sound? Fair enough. Uh, so you want to talk about the Kemba trade, the Fournier, or which, which way do you want to start off? So, yeah, I'll start with the p- report. Um, yesterday I saw a report. Ethan brings it up today, and it's kind of marinated for me now. The report was that the Knicks are looking to trade their vets between Kemba, Fournier, and Burks. Now, personally, I feel like I would keep Alec Burks because you need a veteran. Yeah, he's mad and consistent. Sure, he is – very shaky, but he's a Swiss Army knife for us. You feel me? Like, if we need him to run guard, he can run guard. If we need him to be off the ball, he can be off the ball. He's a little bit of a bigger defender. I understand why they're thinking of doing it. But after I, after I explain all this, it'll make sense why I'm saying it. <laughs> I'm shipping Fournier out for anything and everything. I don't care. Give me, give me a new chair for MSG. I'll take that. Give me some new mops, some new towels, Gatorade bottle. I'll take anything at this point. Kemba. Now, I would trade Kemba, but it really depends on what is happening with the other rumor that I've told you about uh, being the Julius Randle rumor, which I'll explain Mm. after all this talk that we have. So, let's say you can't trade for a good point guard. Is there a reason to trade Kemba and try to force him to play quickly as a starting point guard who he doesn't see as a starting point guard anyways? Sadly, yes. Because in my eyes, I see that as another Porzingis kind of trade where at this point he doesn't want to play for the team and he's just going to sit down the whole entire season. So at least if you get something back before the deadline is a plus for you guys. My, my main thing is Tibbs has said publicly I see Kemba as a starter. So that means he's not adjusting his role at all. So it's like what what's what's the plan here? So here's here's my plan. Um... Like I said, this all depends on who you can get. If you could trade Kemba, trade Burks, then Fournier, obviously your starting lineup has to be whoever you get as a point guard or quickly. RJ, Cam Reddish. Um, depending on the Julius Randle stuff, Obi. No? No Cam? Cam? Reddish, Cam Reddish is already tough, man, and I don't know what's going on with Tibbs. But he needs to get he is, he is obsessed with Todd Gibson. Yo, I swear to God, Todd Gibson got news on this dude or something, bro. There's no way. There's no way. Or he knows he cheated or something. Like, bro, there's no way that this dude is, like, 45 years old and he's playing 30 minutes a game, 20 minutes a game over Obi Toppin. I don't, like, I don't get it. I don't get it either. That's the – like, Obi Toppin's not getting minutes. Cam Reddish is playing five minutes the past two games. I'm not understanding what's going on. Mind you, he only played 10 minutes because we're getting blown out by 30 and say he don't want it. Okay. That's fair. But if it wasn't for that, I don't think he plays. 
Because the rotation that he's running with right now is he's starting Kemba. He's got Fournier, RJ, Randall, mm-hmm. Mitch. Mitch. Yep. Second unit is quickly mm-hmm. Quentin Grimes, Burks, Obi, and Todd Gibson because Nerlens Noel has made a glass and only played like 20 out of the 50 possible games he's played so far. Thanks for taking it. <laughs> Bro, he was a good player last year. And you remember I said this. I was like, I don't know why we're re-signing him if we got Jericho Sims, who's a backup center. Restart the clock, pay Mitch his money, and keep it moving. I agree. Way too much money that no one else is getting paid. I mean, because of us, but still. (laughs) So, I would trade, like I said, in an ideal world, my starting lineup would be either quickly or the point guard you get, RJ, Cam Reddish, Obi, depending on this Randall rumor I'm going to talk about right now. Mitch, and then your second unit will be Rose, Quentin Grimes, and if you can keep Burks, then you do Burks. The four you're going to have to figure out. Uh, I guess you're going to bring back somebody in one of these trades, obviously, to be a backup power forward. And then Noel is going to have to play the five because Noel ain't going nowhere, unfortunately, because no one's taking that contract. Or Jericho Sims. I'm tired of seeing Todd Gibson. Like, yo, I'll, shout out to Todd Gibson. He's a great vet. But Jericho Sims, I feel like I to be one of those players that you play, and if he looks horrendous, then you take him out to save him for his own good. But whatever, Tibbs. So what, what's your take, Ethan? What, what do you think? Does, does, does my reasoning sound good? I'll start looking in. And in some sort, in my opinion, I mean, yeah, Kemba will leave because – Kemba, Kemba got leave. I don't see him playing. I think because I don't want to trade for somebody. Like, I don't want to trade for Jalen Brunson, let's say, because Jalen Brunson, they're going to ask for too much because Tim Hardaway Jr. just got hurt. Mm. And we're going to have to re-sign him this year. Who's to say he doesn't just leave straight up? True. So it's like, I don't want to take that risk because after the Melo trade, granted, Melo was the greatest thing that happened to the Knicks in a minute. That was somebody you could have waited half a season and gotten and not lose any assets. I don't want to give up assets. Agreed. Make the Mavs better when we had their pick next year. Sure. Kemba, Kemba's an all-star talent. It's not like he's just a nobody. He's up there. It's just his defense. Yeah. But I think the defense comes down to the fact that you have Evan Fournier, who is the worst defensive player I think I've ever seen in my life. And Julius Randle is just shot out. Yeah, he, he's not feeling that. Right now it's just RJ Mitchell is the only keepers I see. And maybe it will be top him, but Thibs, I don't know. Thibs have, has him out. So that brings us to the next rumor. Yeah. There's two different sources here. Ian Begley from SNY reported that um, Julius Randle for the right package seems to be dealable, according to other executives that you saw to. So if the right package comes up, they're going to trade Julius Randle. I listened to another YouTube channel, Nick Fan TV. Great YouTube channel for Nick fans out there. Or listen to us first, obviously. But <laughs> um, he was saying that he has a plug that works within the Knicks somehow. This dude has been right about many things. I've told Ethan where I've heard some of these rumors and they happened. Um, and they said, "Don't be surprised if Julius Randle gets traded by the deadline or by the summer." So, Ethan, what do you think? Do you think it's time for Julius Randle to maybe get a change of scenery here? Because he looks mentally shot out, bro. I 100 percent agree. I think they, they put too much weight on their shoulders ever since last season. Fourth seed, King of New York, they put so much on him that I think mentally he is shot out. So that brings me to this next rumor. Mr. Ben Simmons has been a topic of many talks. The Kings wanted Ben Simmons, and the report is the Kings and Ben Simmons pursue. Sacramento has turned elsewhere in trade talks after it was previously agreed, eager to land the 76ers guard. Get Julius Randle to the Sacramento Kings as fast as you can for De'Aaron Fox. If we could pull that off, that's why I wouldn't keep Kepler. Is De'Aaron Fox the answer? Maybe not. Can De'Aaron Fox help the log jam that we have in a lot of these different spots and help us because we need a point guard? Absolutely. 100%. That'll be the best point guard you had in years. Don't even get me started on that list. Of point guards. <laughs> Ethan, you made a face. What's the concern with De'Aaron Fox right now? It's not Fox. It's the Kings organization. 
I feel like they will be more in tune to trade Buddy or Halbert. Halberton? Halbert. Halbert. I think they're more in tune to try to trade them before Fox. But depending where you're able to trade them, then maybe. So let's say we can give them Julius Randle. Because the thing is, I'm thinking about their live jam. They got De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Halliburton, and Davion Mitchell that all play the one and two. Yep. So and Mitchell's not bad. Yeah, so if you give him a power forward, I'm thinking in that sense you got a playmaking power forward. You need Ben Simmons, but he can still play, make score, and we saw what he was able to do last year. Yeah, because your big mans are Holmes and Whiteside. That's center. That's not even power forward. They got nobody. They got Marvin Bagley too, but he'd be he in and out of the lineup 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Hopefully, you know, like – and apparently in King's Twitter, they would take Julius Randle. I'm like – but say less. So let's let's put this in motion. Let's say they do Julius Randle, let's say Fournier, for Fox and maybe even Bagley. And they'll probably even take another pick. Would you do that in an ideal world? In a heartbeat. Mm. In a heartbeat, bro. Is like I said, we need a point guard. The Aaron Fox might not be the greatest three point shooter, but who knows? Maybe that changes when he gets to the Kings. Maybe it's his motor changes. Maybe he's around RJ, OB, quickly, all these guys that work hard. And he thinks to himself, yo, let me keep working to get better. I and mean, who said, who said they want to go Sacramento? So I can only imagine how he feels. Yeah, so it's like, yo, maybe he just needs a better situation. It helps Randall. He gets into a smaller market where he can kind of flourish there and the pressure won't be so crazy like the New York jersey, being as heavy as it is. And maybe that works out. I agree. I 100% agree. And then you got the biggest rumor of all. Why is are the Kings not doing this Ben Simmons trade? Because they believe that James Harden, which I called last year with you and Chris, I told y'all that big three is not going to last. James Harden might leave Brooklyn this summer. The 76ers thinking is we're going to keep Ben Simmons, sign and trade him for when we get James Harden. Do you think that's going to happen? No. I don't see evidence. I really don't see it happening. I don't see him just casually just leaking. Like, you saw how he was at the Rockets, even when they were down bad. And we had Eric Gordon and him. He was still committed. So I don't see him just off season, just automatically like, yeah, let me just go to 76ers. They're yeah, worried. Don't... His OGM is there. Yeah, you're right about that. I don't see it. I don't see him and B working. I don't know. I think that works out fine because James Harden, I don't think it's been a problem with the teams. I think it's the teams around him that's been the problem. You know, now you got KD who gets hurt again. Is he even going to be the same when he gets back? Because last year we saw KD coming in and out of lineups after an injury. The Kyrie situation, there's not going to be any result to it. It's either get vaccinated or you're going to have to sit out. And he's been very stern on, I'm not getting vaccinated. His decision, I don't care. Do what you want to do. And, you know, maybe he thinks, yo, I'm not like, what am I supposed to do here? Like, It's hard to say. I, I mean, I hope if they come to that, the Nets at least trade him for the deadline. Because to lose James Harden in the free, like season, like, I don't think I don't think he's going to trade. I think they're going to try to hold out and hopefully try to keep him by winning a chip, and then we'll see what happens in the off season. And so, we we already talked about this part time Kyrie in the the playoffs. The your majority is home game. I mean, they're in fourth place right now. They've been losing games. I guess the plan is get the fifth or sixth seed and start away. <laughs> and and uh, even then, I mean, you can't go to Toronto. Well, the Toronto's been us. You can't go to certain places, even if, let's say, the Knicks make it. You still can't go to New York. It's going to be interesting, bro. We're going to have to just wait to see. We could leave it there because we can't deep dive into many things. There's been a lot of weird rumors out there. These are like the biggest rumors. That has been consistent. Yeah. The Simmons rumors have been ridiculous. Yeah, so these are like the things that are coming together that kind of piece together very well. So I thought, yo, let's talk about that. Talk about football. We'll be back Monday. We'll see if some people get traded. We'll see what happens with our predictions in the NFL. And we might have to set up another parlay. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe another parlay, bro. You got, you got one of them parlays, homie? Chase. 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 Any time. <laughs> Cooper. 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 <laughs> Yo, buddy, we'll stay in touch, bro. Glad to see you. Let's go Knicks. They play Milwaukee at 10 today. You didn't say let's go Bengals, but it's cool. It's cool. It's cool.
I respect the way you go to Super Bowl. In, look, look, in my defense, I like Joe Burrow. I like Jamar Chase. But I like Travis Kelsey, Mahomes, Tyree Matthew, Tyree Kill. It outweighs them a little bit more, you feel me? You can throw on your little Tyree Kill shirt when they lose next week. Don't worry. It's cool. If you score the touchdown, I'll still wear it. I don't care. Shit. That ain't my team. Look. What? Well, the Jets helmet ain't around here. But uh, <laughs> that's my team. Y'all know that. Don't, don't try to play me like that. Uh, if Chris was here, we all know what he would say. You oh, no. Nah, if Chris was here, brother, the, I would have let those Buccaneer jokes fly a little bit more. But Oh, you're yeah, right. We'll, we'll say that for next week. Don't worry. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Buddy, I'll see you then, bro. Peace. I'll see you. Peace.